Klein again. Uh, we are going to talk just briefly about a prominent physicist's comments, uh, Dr. Lawrence Krauss, who wrote a book recently called The Greatest Story Ever Told So Far. And uh, Lawrence is an unabashed atheist when it comes to the cosmos. He has debated theists, most uh, prominently William Lane Craig. Um, but Lawrence has said, uh, Dr. Krauss has said some pretty interesting things about the universe and about fine-tuning, Alan. And uh, we want to just quickly address some of the more prominent ones, or a prominent comment that he made, I believe, during a William Lane Craig debate. Is that correct? When this, was, when this happened? I believe so. Okay. That's right. So, yeah. um, why is it important? Well, because the, the astrophysical community, especially those that don't believe, are often making statements that are not necessarily scientific. Uh, but they sound scientific, and sometimes they're confusing, and we don't know how to understand them, and, and they can be kind of intimidating. So what we'd like to do, with all due respect to, 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 to Dr. Krauss, is to unpack something that he said to make it a little bit more comprehensible, to, to, to demonstrate uh, maybe what the science behind it and the assumptions behind it, and kind of pick it apart and, uh, and break it down so it's understandable, and, oh, this is what it is, right? So, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. And in particular... This quote was referenced in the, the holy Kool-Aid that we're trying to respond to in, in his claim that fine-tuning was debunked. He, he chose this quote, so yes. uh, I've seen others cite it as well, yeah. and I think it, it'd be good to just kind of unpack a bit about, well, what is the cosmological constant, and right. what sense is it fine-tuned, right. and then to look at the quote. Yes. So, so let's do that. The, the cosmological constant relates to the expansion rate of the universe. So the universe is expanding like a balloon. That's the first thing you need to know. The universe is, we believe it's doing this on a large scale, correct? And the, the cosmological constant could have an impact in terms of either de decelerating or accelerating that expansion rate. So it's important that this rate, the rate at which it expands, is not too fast or it's not too slow because if it was too slow, it collapses on itself. If it's too fast, it rips apart. So what we're talking about here is sort of the gas pedal of the rate of expansion of the universe. How not too fast, right. not too slow, kind of a Goldilocks speed, right? It's the porridge that's just right. This is the, the speed on the accelerator. When you see the highway patrolman on the side of the road, you want your foot 60 miles an hour. That's the, that's the rate, right? We're talking about a very specific narrow rate of expansion. That's what the cosmological constant is, correct? That's right. Okay. And there's different contributions potentially to what could reveal itself as a cosmological constant. Um, Einstein's general theory of relativity, there's a term, and there's a whole history of that that we won't get into, but there's a potential contribution just under general relativity where there could be a factor affecting how the universe expands or contracts and mm -hmm. how that changes over time. Mm -hmm. But then also on quantum field theory, there's very good reasons that physicists believe that there's something called zero point energy that at the very lowest energy state of space, space-time, that you still have a certain amount of energy and that that energy has the ability to cause an acceleration. Like sleeping kindergartners. So you got a room full of sleeping kindergartners <laughs> and there's still energy there. There's a lot of potential energy in the room That's full right. of sleeping kindergartners. It's not zero because one of them wakes up and it's chaos, right? So, That's so right. we're talking about <laughs> a, a, a net zero. So just picture that kindergarten class at nap time. And that's kind of what we're talking about in the in the in the empty in the well empty or the universe right now. Those 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 that's low right. en energy states could could be contributing to this expansion rate, right? Just and like so, a good nap time would be contributing to the teacher's sanity, right? That has to. That's be, right. Yeah. So let's get to this Krauss, uh, Dr. Krauss quote. Uh, do, you, do you feel like you have enough background uh, there? Well, I, I would like to say a bit more about the cosmological constant itself in terms of the fact that there are multiple contributions. To, to give us an effective cosmological constant. There's what I mentioned from general relativity. And then for all these different particles, there's contributions to what that could be. And we know some of them are enormously large, enormously larger than what would be life permitting. Yeah. So We're it's talking like, 120 orders of magnitude, which is like one yeah. followed by 120 zeros. So there's known huge contributions. And therefore, in order to have a small enough value to permit life, we need to have negative contributions, which theoretical physics also predicts. It's like a potluck with your in-laws, right? You just have negative contributions. They bring the cheese casserole. <laughs> you don't like that, right? And so somebody else brings something. So what we're talking about here is everything in the universe is contributing There's something. There's a near perfect cancellation yeah, that's so necessary for Nobody's going to eat the cheese casserole because everybody brought some good food. So over here, so it's kind of like we have to have this balance of all these different particles contributing to this rate of expansion. 
In a sense, so I think right? it's important to, yeah, to understand a bit of the background. And so then when we look at, at Krauss's quote where he says that... You want me to read it? I'll read Go it. ahead and read it okay. if you would, yeah. So this is, this is the quote. Um, and this appears, now the re, again, the reason that we're talking about this is because this appeared on a, in, a, in a popular YouTube video. Uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Thomas Westbrook, who goes by the moniker of Holy Kool-Aid, did a fine-tuning video on his YouTube channel and uh, used this quote, correct? And uh, so it has like 110,000 views or something That's like right. that. And the, at, the, at the popular level, for a lot of skeptics, uh, science is a big thing. And so a lot of times Christians don't have an answer even for these things. And so we hope that this may at least provide you with some, uh, a reference that you can utilize in conversations with friends that are more scientifically minded maybe than, than you are. So here's the Lawrence Krauss quote. Dr. Krauss says, one of the worst fine tuning problems in nature, which is one of the ones I first propose, the cosmological constant problem, that looks like it's incredibly fine tuned, 120 orders of magnitude, the worst fine tuning problem in nature. And Dr. William Lane Craig will jump up and say, look, if it was a lot bigger, we wouldn't have humans. Well, it turns out if it was precisely zero, which is a much more natural number, more life would form, end quote. That's what he said. All right, so the interesting thing, though, is that we know that it's not precisely zero. Starting in about the late 1990s, observations came in on what's called type 1a supernovas, which revealed that the universe is not just expanding, as could easily happen under general relativity, but it's accelerating in its so, expansion. So this, let me, people, I can hear people, my brain saying, what, what does Alan mean by zero? What do you mean the universe isn't zero? Well, it's like, just think of the odometer on your car, right? It's like, a, it's like a number. It's a very, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of history behind that number, but, but, but what you're saying, it's not zero. It's, it's, it's going at a certain rate of speed to break it down in a very simple, simple if way. If it were Overly zero, simple. the universe would have been gradually slowing down its ex, in its expansion like due, due to your, gravity. Yeah, you've taken your foot off the accelerator, your car's eventually going to yeah, stop. Yeah, the gravity is right. still pulling everything together, right. but so what's now that? we know that it's actually accelerating, and this is what is often referred to as, as dark energy. Yeah, something, there's a mysterious force on the gas pedal of the universe pushing it in a, a direction that's expanding it. Um, we know from the data it's expanding. And so that number, that zero, what you said, that, that number, what Dr. Krauss said, that zero, just, just in an overly simplistic term, think of an odometer, think of your speed. Uh, your car's not slowing down, it is accelerating. And it's not a foot, it's something else rather mysterious called dark energy, right? So there, is that? So, what, yeah, what, the, the key here is that what Krauss is saying is that, yeah, it could have been natural if it were zero, in which case it wouldn't have been recognized as necessarily being fine-tuned. That was the status. Yeah. Before the late 90s, there was at least this hope among physicists that We'd have we'll a discover zero. a symmetry which will result in it having a natural value of zero, in which case it wouldn't require fine-tuning. But the fact that it's not zero means that it really is an issue of fine-tuning, and it's definitely not one that's solved. And it's not one that's just brought up by creationists or William Lane Craig, but it's, it's very much something discussed in the physics literature by physicists and who say things like, this is still not a solved problem. We believe this is a very finely tuned parameter. And it just so happens that Luke Barnes is doing research and has been for quite a while using something called the Eagle simulation software which is used in many different contexts, but it allows him to study galaxy formation under different values for the cosmological constant. And the data is coming in and showing, you know, it's affirming what everybody really knew that, yeah, it requires a lot of fine tuning. Mm -hmm. It may yeah. actually be a tiny bit less than what some people were saying, but when you've got 120 orders of magnitude, uh, it, it, it doesn't diminish so it, it be, very much. It would so. be easier for the agnostic skeptic to have a universe at zero than it would be to have a universe accelerating at just the right speed. Is the point correct? is that the cosmological constant, if it were zero, it would have been also life permitting, as Dr. Krauss says. But the fact is that it's not zero, and so fine tuning is required. Yes. And there's also an interesting thing worth mentioning that there was a recent article from 2016 in which they were discussing how it may actually be, they were arguing, in fact, that it's better for life, that it's not zero, that it's a little bit larger than zero uh, because of something called gamma ray bursts. Mm. There's these intense, things going on in the universe that can wreck it for life. And by having a little bit of your foot on the accelerator, as you were saying, 
we can get we're away able from to minimize them. the effects of these kinds of <laughs> running things. away from the Texas State Highway Patrolman is what we're doing. No, but the, so I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, I've talked to Luke Barnes about that, and I'm not. I don't think we want to claim necessarily that that article is right, even uh, you know. But I think the point is that fine tuning is required, and there's, in fact, I think a much better reason for saying you know, hey, if God is behind the fine tuning why he wouldn't have made it zero because first of all the um, the difference in the amount of life between zero and the tiny value in our universe is basically trivial you, you don't see much of a difference at all if you mm -hmm. watch the galaxy formation mm -hmm. coming out of luke's simulations between those two cases mm -hmm. um, and in fact with this other article now there's reasons at least in in the in play for why god could have wanted to have it non-zero solely from a physics standpoint yeah but the bigger thing, too, is that it's, as Lawrence Krauss says, and as other physicists have discussed, had God put it at zero, no one would have really seen it as a finely tuned parameter. Mm -hmm. So on the hypothesis that God finely tuned the universe, wanted to leave a little bit of evidence, this is the very thing that you would actually expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people, uh, originally Steven Weinberg pointed to the possibility of an anthropic multiverse explanation for the cosmological constant, arguing that if you had values randomly distributed and then you, you said, well, there's no life in these universes, which would be obviously the vast majority of them, but then you had this life permitting part, then you could analyze whether our universe seems to be typical among those which permit life. It's a good way of kind of testing the multiverse. Mm. And it came surprisingly close to predicting the value and that got a lot of attention. Mm. Although it was still off by about a factor of 10 and I think a more detailed study shows that there's a little more wiggle room than that in there. And so, and other people like Lee Smolin, even before Luke has started doing his simulations, and I don't think Dr. Barnes has published that yet. Uh, so other people have, have critiqued this as an, a multiverse being a good explanation of that anyway, but mm. that's part of what's going on there. So I think it's it's very misleading quote to to think that the, the fact that we have this cosmological constant and that it could have been zero in any way takes away from the fact that it is in fact finely tuned and it doesn't either diminish from the potential of the, it to be a part of a cumulative case argument that fine tuning and points to a, a sure. creator. And the other, the other fallacy I think in that, in that quote is that to say that, uh, uh, just to say that the, if, if it was zero, there would be more life. It doesn't mean that more life doesn't necessarily mean it would be more or less fine-tuned. You're still dealing with That's right. the very fine-tuning of life itself. So the, so the multiplicity of life in the universe really isn't a factor. It's just life itself. So that's is, a good point, Dan. Yeah. factor so that you don't... Zero, that, 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 well, there'd be more life. That's not really an argument against fine-tuning. It, it begs more questions, you know, just, yeah. just life itself. So. Some, some of the objections to fine-tuning as an argument for God really do assume a lot more about d divine psychology than does the minimalistic right. claim of, hey, maybe God would, would want life. And sure. we're going to talk a lot about yeah. that in other, other videos, but this is maybe a good way to, to wrap this one up. Yes. Then.